You're here, I'm Queer, and welcome back to my channel. I know it's been too long, but we can't have our spice without a little bit of sugar. She's finally here and I'm so excited to show you all. This project was very stressful to say the least, but she definitely came out so freaking good and sweet. And seeing the twins together is an absolute dream. I'm so excited to show you how I made sugar, but first I'd like to share that I am in the process of sorting out my dolls and hopefully getting them into new homes. I have made so many dolls and I definitely need to make some space. So make sure to follow me on Instagram and here on YouTube and make sure to hit the bell icon so you can get more updates on which dolls are going to be up for sale. Additionally, I'm looking for more doll seamstresses to collaborate with for future projects. So please send me a DM on Instagram and hopefully we can create some fabulousness together. And with that being said, let's get started on Miss Sugar. So for Miss Sugar, I will be using this Model Muse Barbie. You guys know I love, love, love the Model Muse pose. They are just so model-esque and elegant and sophisticated. And obviously this is what I use for Spice. So they need to be a combo. So Model Muse it is. And as usual, I will be sculpting the dress so that it mirrors Spice's outfit with the overall technique, so I am super gluing everything shut. After that's dry, I take my epoxy sculpt and we mix two equal parts together. And this is an industrial clay that will cure over time because of the two parts mixing together. And this is perfect for doll customizations. You don't have to bake it. And it is a little bit stronger than air dry clay and much more durable. So over here, I am just giving her some body. Miss Sugar also loves to pad, and we gotta give her some hourglass figure. We are now finally working on her literal clothes. So over here, I am just sculpting some sleeves onto her arm. And of course, this is going to be a sculpted figure doll. So we are able to put in so much more details, so much more like effects that would probably not be attainable if I used fabric. If you're new here and you're wondering why I sculpt some clothes, I usually try and see what I can attain either by getting it um, into actual clothing like textiles or if I'm sculpting it, like what is going to be the better looking effect. And for me, it all just depends on the actual look, the actual doll, the, the person I'm making, like ov the overall look needs to be correct. So. Yeah, that's how I kind of assess if I'm going to be sculpting it or if I'm going to be like using actual clothing. Here I'm using Warbla and this is going to be the base for her skirt. Warbla is a multi-purpose item. This is really, really cool. It is used a lot for cosplays and it is also beautifully, it is also perfect for doll customizations. As you can see, it is so malleable once you heat it up. And you gotta be careful with this though. Sometimes it can get a little bit too soft that it's a little bit crazy looking, but with the right heat temperature and a little bit of push and pull, you can really create beautiful sculptures with Warbla. Now we're going to be working on the corset look, like the bodice, and I'm just kind of uh, mapping it out onto this doll to see where things should be going. And I'm using the same exact epoxy clay that I thinned out into a slab, and we're just covering all of that up. I think the hardest part with this one is that I made the corset a little bit too thick, 
so it was a little bit bulkier than I expected, but I definitely went in and sanded it a lot more in the end. Of course, because we're trying to mimic realistic textiles onto her skirt, I want to go ahead and add some wrinkle effects where, you know, the skirt would naturally have those crease lines and wrinkles and all of that. We're trying to give the fabric look. When I was assessing the overall pose, I noticed that she actually does not touch her waist. Like, there's a little bit of a gap over here, so I'm gonna try and make her hand fall onto her hip a little bit better. So, unfortunately, we're gonna have to cut her limbs off a little bit over here. I'm just taking my saw. Be very careful when, you know, trying to do this. And I'm just trying to repose it so that her hand hits her hip a little bit better. I don't know why, but it just really bothered me that it wasn't touching it. So it was either going to her waist or going to her hip. And I feel like the hip might be a little bit better. I taped her hand in place and we are going to be re-sculpting the sleeves, unfortunately. Um, it is what it is, but at least I caught it, you know, early on in the process. And now it's time to add some details on her corset, those piping, hems, and all of that. Just the beautiful detailing of the bodice, the corset, and over here I'm just using clay again. It is really, really nice, but actually in hindsight, I could have used Warbler for this part. I feel like it would have been easier to, to put. Yeah, in hindsight, I feel like this would have been better if I used Warbler. For her top, I actually was trying to figure out the shape of it and I think I was able to see that it was kind of like a pointy, kind of like cone situation. I did exaggerate it a lot pointier because I was like, it would be really, really cool and more futuristic looking if it was really, really pointy. I took my own liberty on sculpting the bra. It wasn't this pointy. It was a little bit pointy, but not literally like this, so. But I just feel like it looks so, so good and like just more fierce looking. Over here, we are giving her the shoulder pads. We are sculpting kind of like the jacket part, so it's gonna go towards her back. And we wanna make sure you're adding some seams over here to make it look realistic. And I really, really love the shape of these sleeves. You guys know I'm like so obsessed with like a 1940s, 1980s type of look with the sh shoulders. And it's just very, very structured and I love this look so much. And now it's time to sculpt her platforms. As you can see, there's a lot of sculpting going on, but it is quite necessary for the overall look. And I'm just taking some pin needle over here to act as a base for her heel. And I will be covering it up with this epoxy glue. I've been using epoxy glue to, to sculpt the heel recently. I feel like it's just easier to achieve a pointy heel situation rather than using clay and you can just sand it into whatever shape you want so I thought it was perfect. We are finally putting on the strap for her shoes as well. So over here I'm just cutting some bow shaped uh, warbler and this will act as our strap for our shoes. <laughs> For the rest of the straps that goes all over her legs, I'm taking Warbla again and some ruler and I'm just cutting out these like really really fine and thin pieces and this will act as our shoe straps that goes all around her legs. And 
again, you just want to heat that up so that it is malleable and we can just finally wrap it around her legs. The cool part about Warbla is that you t sometimes don't have to glue it. Like if it's really, really hot, it can actually adhere to whatever you're like sticking it onto. You just have to like press really hard. And voila, we have a beautiful, perfect interlacing lace for her shoes. And I'm using the same exact thing for her jacket. Her jacket actually has like two straps that's kind of holding it together. And we are pretty much done with the sculpting portion of her body. As you can see, she looks amazing so far. Like, oh my god, I cannot wait to see this in full color and detail. But let's go ahead and take a break and prep our head. This is the head I will be using for Miss Sugar. As you can see, it is a My Scene doll. So it is definitely a hybrid. And I just love this face so much. Unfortunately, I'm not aware of who this character is. So if you guys know, please let me know in the comments below. But she has beautiful red hair with like golden highlights and she's just perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove her factory hair because we are going to be prepping it for Miss Sugar's pink and white hair. And oh my god, what is this? Not yarn? No, it's not. I'm using this oyster shell and pixie dust, 38 inches from Dolly Hair. This is the nylon hair, and I think I ordered like three pink ones and then six oyster shell. I definitely over-ordered because I'm not fully aware of how much I should be ordering, so yes. Shout out to Zombie Corn for helping me figure it out because I was like, I do not know what I'm doing and they are definitely like the master of rerouting. So thank you for helping me. So yes, I will be rerouting this doll you guys won. Um, for those who don't like me making wigs and yarn wigs specifically, um, you've won. I, one of the reasons why it took so long for me to make sugar is because I was debating on how I would tackle her hair just because I knew that I wouldn't be able to get the effect and the look that we need for Miss Sugar if I was to use yarn and if I was to make a wig. So I am rerouting and you know what? I gotta say it was pretty satisfying and it was pretty easy to style, um, yeah. Um, I don't even remember the last time I rerouted. I actually had fun rerouting. The only thing is that I rerouted it a little bit too thick. I don't know if you can tell, but on the camera, the hair is very thick. Like, it was a lot of hair. I, I got a little carried away, but it's fine. You know, to secure all of our reroutes, we want to use Fabri-Tac, and that will hopefully secure all of our um, hair inside the head. While that dries, I'm gonna go ahead and sand our body and, you know, I didn't really pay attention too much on her sleeves just because I knew that the sleeves and skirt was gonna be covered with glitter anyway, so I didn't need them to be completely, like, smooth. But I did try my best to smooth out her shoes and also her corset. And now it's time to paint everything and do a little bit of skin matching. As you can see, I am working on her skin first to make sure that everything matches. And then after all of that is done, we work on her outfit. I'm taking some pink and we are covering her jacket with this beautiful, kind of like, like true pink color. It was really, really nice and honestly, in the end, it's not gonna be like showing anyway. You just wanna make sure you paint something first before you cover it with glitter because sometimes not everything is gonna be covered with glitter like completely and you know, this will be showing up. So, you know, that's just my preference. Her corset is actually a darker pink, kind of like a more hot pink color. 
So I am painting her corset and also her bra the same exact pink. Sugar's color story is pretty interesting. She actually has multiple pinks in her color story. She has um, the middle pink, this hot pink, and then kind of like a really pale silver pink. And these are just from the promo pictures that I was kind of like like seeing so I'm not entirely sure how they looked in person. I was doing a little bit of stalking for behind the scenes and everything like that so those definitely help but that was just an observation just to kind of clear the eye because sometimes it can get overwhelming trying to figure out what's going on with an outfit. Now this part is also a reason why it took me a while to make Miss Sugar because I was trying to figure out how to get the chrome effect on her bra and also on her corset. Metallic paint um, in general, the one that's like acrylic metallic paint, they do not reflect the same as chrome. Chrome is very mirrored, it is very reflective, it is very shiny, and it's like literally like metallic chrome. Now I know that there are chrome paint pens that is also used for crafting, and I know that there's spray paint in chrome. However, there's no there's no pink chrome in any of those. There's no pink chrome on um, spray paint. There's no pink chrome in pen that I was able to get. I don't know if they exist, but yeah. So I was trying to figure out how to get the effect because I didn't want to just paint it like metallic pink and call it a day because that's not the look. The look is chrome. So then I remembered that you can get a chrome effect through nail art, like for nails, like manicure. So I was trying to research how nail artists get the chrome effect and here I have my test subject. If you guys don't know, this is um, my glob of epoxy sculpt. So this is what I, <laughs> this is where I put all of my excessive epoxy sculpt clay that I over, I over mix, and I just make this ball. And it's gotten so much bigger over the years. But anyways, this is where I was testing out the technique, and boom! Look at that. It is literally high shine and. That's why it took long. Like as you can see over here, this is like a regular metallic paint. And as you can see, it shows the texture a little bit too much. Um, versus this one, it is like really, really smooth. So what I'm going to be using is this UV gel base and also these chrome powders. I have these two chrome powders in true red pink and also in hot pink. So hot pink is the one that we're going to be using the most for her corset and the other one is gonna be for her bra. Let's just say um, I got a headache doing this, okay? Like just the fumes and powders flying into my face, I don't think was healthy. So um, yeah, and also you're gonna need an applicator, which is like kind of like this spongy brush. So first I lay a base of the UV gel. This is transparent, a clear gel, and you wanna make sure it is really, really thick and then you want to cure that with UV light. You know, a couple of seconds here and there, maybe 90 seconds overall. And after that, we take our powder and you just rub off the powder onto the, the smooth surface. And as you can see, it looks so shiny, like almost foily, and it's just so, so highly reflective. I love the effect so much and like, I was so happy I was able to get this effect because I was gonna go crazy. So you just want to do that in every single panel of the corset. And honestly, this was really, really fun. I think it was just really fun because the effect was correct. Like, this is the correct effect. This is the correct, like, textile that Sugar was wearing. And I was just really, really happy I was able to get the same exact effect. So it just goes to show that doll crafting and other crafting really like like crafting in general have a lot of like overlaying techniques that we all can learn from one another and i feel like doll customization like can take so many lessons from like drag artists cosplayers wig makers nail artists like literally like 
I don't know. It's just really, really fun learning a technique from a different hobby or a different career and implementing it into doll customization. So, literally, like, just trying to work on this was really, really fun, but it was just so highly, like, toxic, I think, fume wise. So, to all the nail techs out there, all of the nail artists out there, I have so much respect for you guys because this was so not easy. I mean, it was fun, but it was definitely painstaking. And um, not to mention, I thought art supplies were expensive. These were expensive. They were like, each of the powder was like $15 or something like that. It was crazy. It was expensive. I was shook. <laughs> But it was fun. It was fun. I've always dreamt about making like like futuristic armor. Like I can finally do that with this chrome effect. And look at how reflective everything is. It looks so perfect. I keep like I I just I'm like dying and obsessed with how it worked. It was really really great. And now that's out of the way, it's time to work on the glitter. And this one is also fun, but also annoying to do. But it was fun. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and take my glue. And I'm specifically using Elmer's glue all for this one. And you just want to do it like part by part. Because sometimes the glue will dry a little too quickly. And then you just want to pour glitter all over it. And when you want to make sure that you're doing this on like a paper plate or something to catch the glitter, you know, so we can recycle it. You can't be wasteful. And yeah, you just want to do this part by part. And it was really, really fun. Just messy, but fun. I don't know why I was such a hater of glitter before, but now I'm like, I love it. <laughs> it's just like... I mean, I don't love it because it's so, like, annoying to, to make, but, like, the overall effect of glitter is just so, so good. It looks so cool, and it's just, like, highly, like, reflective and just fabulous looking and just so glam. I don't know. It's so great. It's so great. And now we're coming in with this lighter colored glitter. And at first I didn't know what if I liked this specific glitter because there's a shift of green in there. But you know what? Overall, I feel like the green actually adds a little bit of like dimension with the overall look. The overall glitter is still pink. It's just it just shifts into green, which is not too bad. So I was fine with it. I'm painting her bra, the border of it, with silver paint, and as you can see, it is just not the same as the chrome. Like, the silver is just more matte looking, there's no shine in there, there's no mirror effect. So, it's really, really interesting to see metallic paint versus the chrome powders. It's just crazy. I'm taking my pink acrylic paint to map out the design of her overall jacket. Her jacket and overall clothing is printed and decorated with all of these star motifs. So I am just painting that with acrylic paint. This is also a reason why I sculpted this look. Just because I know that if we use real textiles, it would be really, really hard to achieve the overall look without adding bulk, without making it look like not right so I know that sculpting it and doing everything like freehand was a better choice to do. I actually do not know how the back of her uh, jacket looks so this is me trying to make it up. Every picture that I got her hair was covering it unfortunately so I was just like mm, let's just give it a big star in the back and two small stars or something. And after we paint the big stars, we are painting a small star inside of the big stars that we just painted. And this one is going to be in white. For her shoes, I wasn't able to get it completely the same. Um, her shoes actually had multiple little stars 
um, as a design, but it was just gonna be a little bit, it's gonna be too small for the design to even pop out, so I just made it big. And now I'm taking a darker glitter and we are gonna be outlining the pink glitter first over here, as you can see. Actually, it's hard to see, but it's fine. <laughs> Just know that I am doing the pink outline first with this darker glitter. And after that, it's time to fill the white stars with white glitter. And voila! We are pretty much done with her outfit, at least so far. Um, there's still so much work to do, but we are done with the glitter, we're done with the corset, we are done with the stars. Um, what else? We're pretty much there, we're like 50% done with her outfit, but we need to add more details. So here we are adding some stars on top of her shoes, and this one I cut out using a pleather fabric, just because it was malleable enough and it wasn't as bulky as the Warbler. And I'm pretty much doing the same exact technique that I did for her jacket, like how I, how I did the stars there. I'm doing the same exact method. Now this part I really hated so much. It's time to finally paint in her straps with a white, like, line straps. I hated this part. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I was like, my eyes kept twitching because it was trying to focus on these like small, like tiny lines, but it was fine. It definitely does add a more detailed look with the overall shoe. And I'm actually adding glitter to all of the white lines that we made for her shoes. Now I'm taking my crystals over here, and this is honestly a mixture of Preciosa, Swarovski, and Amazon gems. Honestly, I, I just put them all here. They're all really, really highly reflective, honestly, so you can't go wrong with them. And I am going to be covering her jacket straps with these crystals. The stars all over her outfit, and also her corset. She is definitely blinged out. Her straps was actually held together by these little stars. I don't know if that was like a button or something, but they just look like tiny stars. So I'm just taking some studs, some star studs over here. Again, this is like used for nail art. And I'm painting it white and covering it with glitter. And now let's cover the piping of her corset with the gems. And voila, we are pretty much done. Almost, almost. We're almost done with Miss Sugar, as you can see. However, we are missing one thing, which is kind of like this flower star fascinator brooch um, on her skirt. That's kind of keeping it together a little bit. So I just cut this eight pointed star over here, or kind of like a flower also using um, the pleather fabric that we use for her shoes. And we will be using this as her like brooch slash fascinator slash pin slash decor motif. I'm painting it pink, covering it with glitter, and we are covering it with some crystals. Let's wait for that to dry and let's work on her bag, her purse. Now, I wish I kept the same exact pattern that I used for Miss Spice's bag so that they're literally the same exact size. However, I do gotta say, Sugar's bag is just a wee bit bigger than Spice, which is fine. You know, different bags. But I'm taking my Warbler and I am making this handbag from scratch and we are just putting it together. 
it's pretty easy once you break down the shape of it. Uh, it's kind of like a puzzle or kind of like a paper doll type of sculpture. So it was pretty cool trying to make bags out of Warbla. Her strap is actually like a circle ring strap, so I'm just taking Warbler again, and we are putting it as a ring. So her back is actually chrome as well, like metallic chrome. So over here I'm just painting it silver so you can see how not chromey it looks and not perfect <laughs> like it doesn't it doesn't look like it it's not good so I was like okay I can't really go with a bag like this so then I went and bought this metallic chrome powder in silver because I was like I can't have her corset all all chrome looking but her bag isn't so again we're scratching it and we're starting in new usually for silver to really pop you want your base color to be black so over here i'm painting her bag black we are gonna be using the chrome powder on this and same exact technique i put a layer of uv gel first and then i cured it and now we're taking our uh, sponge and we are brushing that on and as you can see it is just so much better so highly reflective and it's just it's just a better look you know like look at that it looks like a metallic fabric Our sugar's bag has the good girl writing on it so I'm just trying to freehand that a little bit. You know, I'm not really good at freehanding letters, so bear with me. And now let's just add the star on top of the bag and we're pretty much done with her purse. And now it's time to style her hair. I wanted to style her hair before repainting her because I knew it was gonna be a mess. She has really, really long hair. Again, like I said before, I rerouted her with 38 inches of hair. So literally she had like 19 inches of hair going on over here, which I knew I had to cut, which kind of broke my heart, but it's fine. And honestly, this was, this was pretty easy to style like i if i was trying to do this with yarn hair this would have been such a mess and it would have it would have looked like a hot mess also it would have been a mess to do it would have it would have looked like a hot mess i really hope you guys who don't like me making yarn wigs um i hope you're happy with this one this is for you this is for you i rerouted it with nylon hair um, I do want to thin out the hair just because it is really, really thick and over here I'm using multiple razors. For the comparison, it is day and night. I love the thinned out look so much better than the really, really thick one. So we're just going to be cutting and thinning out Miss Sugar's hair as much as we can without taking out too much length, of course. I was actually really, really pleasantly surprised. You know, the reason why I don't reroot is because I often don't know how much hair I need. And I feel like trying to access doll hair is not as easy as trying to access yarn. Like I can just go to the store and get a color of yarn that is perfectly matching. However, I do know that my the yarn hair does have its limitations as well. So I'm really, really happy that I rerouted Miss Sugar. I hoped and wished that I did the same thing for Spice, but it's fine, you know, you know, you live and you learn. And over here, I learned that there are really, like, really, really good hair techniques that only, that you can only get with rerouting. And if you're using, like, actual doll hair, it was, it was really fun, though. It was really satisfying to create this um, hairstyle. It was so easy to to style her hair because obviously 
I don't have to fight her wig not staying on and everything like that. So it, it was really, really nice. And I hope you guys enjoy the, you know, this technique because I really did. And now it's time to reunite her head with her body. And as you can see, this is why I try not to, like, look at all of this squishing action. Like, if her head was repainted, she would have cracked and I would have been pissed. And this is why I try to repaint after the head is on the body. But again, we have to spray everything with Mr. Super Clear and I am just mapping out her features. Sugar's makeup is a little bit different than Spice's, so I want to make sure that they have that clear variation with their makeup look, but I still want them to look like twins, of course. When I was repainting her face, I I realized that this doll's head is actually not symmetrical at all. Like how it's sculpted and maybe just over time, maybe the plastic vinyl just warped, but she was not symmetrical. I was trying to figure out what was wrong with the doll's face. In person, it looked really, really morphed, but on camera, it actually looks pretty. <laughs> so I was really about to scrap her entire face and start over. But I was like, you know what, let's just trust the process and see where this goes because her face turned out so beautiful. Miss Sugar is obviously wearing pink eyeshadow for this one, but she does have a very, very defined cut crease. And her cut crease actually looked like it had glitter or something shimmery on it. So later on, we're going to be covering her lids with glitter. She, she also had pink eyeshadow in the bottom of her eyes. So I made sure to add that. I really wanted her eyes to pop and I wanted the blue to really like be like such a high contrast with the pink like she's just serving Barbie like this is just like Barbie realness surprisingly her makeup for this one the actual crease line was black um, at least that's what it looked like, so I was kind of surprised because you would think it would be like really really like pink or something. Um, but I actually really like the black. It makes it more graphic, it makes it more dolly and more drag. And of course we gotta define her face, we gotta cut her cheekbones and contour her a little bit. Did give her contour around the face a little bit more, just because Miss Sugar likes to have a more golden suntan look than Spice. So I really wanted them to have a contrast in skin tones as well. So yeah, because I feel like it also matches the overall look that they're trying to portray. I feel like Miss Sugar is very like beach vibes, very like... You know, like the sugar and sweet, tan, and then the spice is really spooky, ooky, alternative and all that. Really, really uh, pale, vampy type of look. So I like that contrast between them. To make Miss Sugar's eyes a little bit lighter, I'm adding some white in there. You know, just to make it look more icy blue instead of this true blue color contacts. And I wanted her lips to pop out a little bit more, so over here I'm just adding a little bit of a light pink on top of her lips. I'm drawing the realistic lines in her iris just to give it a, some sort of realism and so that the eyes doesn't look too plain. And now it's time to highlight! I know this is like a hit or miss with people. Some people hate it, some people love it, I love it, and hello we're working with a drag queen so I think it is a must. 
I'm adding the same exact catch lights that I did for Miss Spice so that they look like they're in the same universe, you know? And Miss Sugar actually had gems all around her eye makeup as well, so I'm just taking some crystals. And then in between her lashes, I'm actually using glitter, like silver glitter, because the, the gems is going to be too big for in between her lashes. And I'm using the same exact glitter for her eyelids. And of course, her lips needs to be very, very wet and glossy, so I'm just using my Sculpey Glaze Gloss. And now it's time for the lashes! And for this one, I'm using the individual fake human lashes, and I think I used 11 per eye. Now it's time to work on her earrings. Miss Sugar actually had star earrings and I got this from Amazon, this pack of stars. I don't know why I needed a pack of stars, but you know, it is what it is and I'm just gonna be covering it with glitter. I'm taking this human stud earrings over here and this is what I will be putting the star earrings in between. And now it's time to accessorize her hair. I'm so excited for this part. I'm taking again this Nail Charms stars over here in silver and we are going to be gluing it all over her buns. And I'm taking smaller stars and I'm gluing that onto her braids in front. Let's revisit her brooch slash fascinator slash pin slash flower. And over here, I am just gluing this onto these multiple chains over here. And I believe this was like from Joann's or something. And we're going to be gluing that onto her skirt. Now, I was really excited because she looked really, really good. However... I made her face a little bit too tan than her body. As you can see, the skin match is not matching, which I, I can definitely see on camera, and it was very, very stark in person. So I was like, dang, I don't know what to do. Like, I'm already here. It would be so difficult to try and color match her with everything going on. Like, the difference is just too much. So I went ahead and removed her head, and yes, her face didn't crack, thank god. And I am just over here and I'm gonna be giving her the tan that she needs, the golden tan. So it's literally like maybe like two shades darker than the actual Barbie body that I used, but it is a completely perfect match with my sugar's head. And you know, I had to do it, um, but I definitely had to contemplate on this because I knew it was going to add another day of work, but it's fine. Overall, in the end, it was perfect. And we can't forget her manicure. I did this off camera because trying to film me giving her nails was just so difficult to do. And I'm just giving her like really light pink nails. Now let's have her hold her bag. And of course we can't forget to add glitter all over her body. I want her face to shine and shimmer like she's just on the beach each. Let's go get away. You know what I mean? And we're finally done with sugar. <laughs> 